Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're gonna take a real quick look at these Subosan uh, hardness testers that you can get. Um, I believe it's made in Japan there. Probably should have looked that up beforehand. Anyways, Chinese, Japanese, somewhere over there in the Eastern countries. Um, again, I do believe I do believe it's a Japanese company that makes these, if I remember my purchase order correctly. Anyways, I'll put some links where you guys can go read up about these down in the description down below. Be aware those are affiliate links. So if you do per decide to purchase um, these through that link, uh, it goes to help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Um, so full disclosure there. But anyways, so yeah, these uh, Subosan hardness testers, I've went ahead and picked up these. These don't run that cheap, but they're cheaper compared to a lot of other things that you could actually get into online to test Rockwell hardness. These little files here, they are only cost right around 75 bucks. Sometimes you can get them for around 50. Depends on whether you got a deal or things like that. I did get free shipping with these. So, you know, 75 bucks with free shipping. You know, they got like nine bucks in an envelope and things to send this. Uh, so again, really not that bad uh, of a product but let's go ahead and open this up real quick take a look at it get rid of that little white box i might keep it in the white box just to keep this nicer um, while it's sitting in the cabinet uh, but there you go pretty simple pretty simple little case this is a fake it's like a fake leather it's not really anything it's just like a plastic textured plastic if you will you've got a velcro cover to it and there's the reveal of that. So, you know, that, that works out pretty good. They are color coded. They're a color coded item. So you got from black, which is the 65 Rockwell, all the way down to the lowest Rockwell that they have that you can scratch test at, at 40 Rockwell. And that's on the C scale. By the way, there are different scales of Rockwell hardness testing out there. So, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch. There's B, there's C, there's D scales, there's there's a bunch of different uh, hardness scales out there that you can compare something to. The main thing that you want to look for is C scale, Rockwell C. But anyway, so that's what that looks like. It also gives you a whole lot of stuff in, uh, <laughs> again, in Chinese or, well, in Japanese because it was made in Japan. See, it says it right on the file, so we would have got into that eventually. So it has a whole bunch in Japanese, so if you don't speak Japanese, you're probably not going to understand the uh, the way that you use these but it does give you a little picture diagram and basically you're just rubbing this file to see if it scratches so it's really just a scratch test type file i'll take and pull one of these out here you know and basically all you do is you just rub it on the surface of something and if it scratches that surface then it is that hardness um, or in that range now this is like a 60 rockwell there's a 55 rockwell and then there's a 50 rockwell all the way down to 45 and 40. Um, something to keep in mind about these files though, is when you do when you do this, you know, what if it scratches at 45, or, or what if it scratches at 50, um, but not at 45? Could have been 46, could have been 47 Rockwell, could have been 48, 49 Rockwell. You really won't know. So this is only gonna give you a range, really, of what it can be. So it's gonna be between when you say that it's a Rockwell hardness, it's gonna be a Rockwell hardness between 45 Rockwell C and 50 Rockwell C. So just keep that in mind that this is not going to be super accurate. Really the only way to take and get it super accurate is to get some digital testing equipment and things of that nature. I do plan on getting some of that into the shop just so this way when I do do um, review videos on all these different types of anvils that we've got in the shop that I will have some actual testing things that we can do that you can test yourself at home and kind of just see what you're wanting to um, do. I believe that this is a much better test of an anvil's hardness than a ball bearing drop test. Now with that being said, let's go back to a caveat. I have said in the past that it is mass under the hammer that matters most when it comes to blacksmithing, and I still stand by that. If you have something that's jumping around, or if you have something that is easily sucking up the kinetic energy from your hammer, that that is going to matter more than just how high a ball bearing bounces. But I also stand corrected. There is a test out there that I was told about um, by a subscriber. I'll put them up right here if I can. Um, 
anyways, and it's a, a Lieb, I believe it's a Lieb rebound test tester. I do plan on getting one of these into the shop. So this way I can take a look at maybe an economical one and also show you some better uh, testing. But that Lieb tester, if you will, without going into too much detail, its whole principle, its sole principle, is it works off measuring the amount of rebound. And the way that it does that is that something that is hardened versus something that is soft, something that is hardened, uh, you cannot dissipate the energy as much from that. It's incapable of you know flexing something that's super hard it's not as easily flexed as something that's soft, so therefore you get a higher return. Um, again, it goes a lot more into, again, I'll put, I'll put a link to this hardness tester and you can read up on it down in the description down below and uh, you know kind of do your own research there. But yes, I do stand corrected on that. The ball bearing does have some effect to testing an anvil's rebound and you know the hardness in an anvil. Uh, a ball bearing that doesn't jump very high might indicate a fairly soft anvil, especially if the other conditions aren't met, like something with some ring, like you hear, although that's not the main requirement of an anvil. I've already proven that you can quiet an anvil right down. Um, but usually when ring is present, high rebound is present in the conditions of the anvil, the mass of the anvil is present, you're going to end up having a really good anvil. But enough of me waffling on, you guys are probably tired of hearing me waffle on forever. Let's take these over to that to an anvil here, my shop. Let's go to Olga and we are going to test out how hard Olga surfaces with these files. Okay, so here we are, we're in the main workshop. Here's Olga, my trusty 465-pound North German Pettinghaus anvil. Pettinghaus is a notorious maker uh, for great anvils, so we're going to go ahead and just give it a bit of a scratch test right up here by the hardy hole. Now, this is meant to be a non-destructive as much as possible test. You don't want to be sitting here and sawing on the edges of your anvil. We're not trying to file divots or grooves into an anvil to test it. We are simply just trying to test whether this will scratch and how much. So we will start with, again, give you guys a better look at these files. We are going to start at the lowest end and then we will move up from there. And hopefully you guys can tell what we are doing. So I'm going to go about right here next to the hardy hole and I'm gonna scratch the surface. And I'm gonna take a look. It did nothing. There is no, no scratches whatsoever there. I mean, it didn't even hardly remove oxidization on the anvil. So now we'll go ahead and move up to 45 Rockwell. We'll continue to scratch. Nothing, basically just slides across the surface. Um, file just really didn't do anything at all. Nothing on that end. We will move up to 50 Rockwell. Again, we're going to do the same test. That felt a little bit more grippy, and it just started to kind of put a little bit of a mark there. To come over here to the rusty area. It's just removing a little bit of rust, but other than that, mostly unscathed. So this is going to fall right between where I figured it was going to, between 50 and 50 Rockwell, 5 Rockwell most likely. Yeah, and now that bites. That, that's biting into the surface of the anvil, so I'm not going to go very far on that. Um, one thing that you may not be able to tell, so between 50, again, and these are renowned for their hardness, uh, just being good quality, tough anvils. Um, so no fears in that. But this here, so at 50 Rockwell, I could start to just feel it grab the material a bit on the surface of the anvil. Similar to how if you're doing how you check with a file to see if you've gotten hard on your chisels and things or punches. If it slides freely over the surface, it is not hardened, um, or it's at least not as hard as that file. 
uh, is concerned. So if it glides across, it's super hard or it's harder than the file that you're checking it with. This here, same principle. At 55 Rockwell, it grabs. At 50 Rockwell, it slides. So it is between 50 and 55 Rockwell hardness, or that is Olga. Um, so far, I'm pretty impressed with these files. Um, there's nothing to go wrong with these. Uh, they, they are not that cheap to where, you know, say like the file teeth just flattened right over and are, they're instantly dullened by doing this. Uh, so I think these are going to work out really well. Yeah, so like I said, there you go. There you have it. Olga here is between 50 and 55 Rockwell, uh, probably sitting around 52. I would say 52 to 54 Rockwell um, on the C scale, as that's what they are known for most likely. So that's where I'm going to place it. So that's a pretty good anvil. I will also be doing other videos in the future where we will be going into more detail on the actual little 66 pounder and a lot of the other cheap anvils that you can buy on Amazon and eBay. We'll be using these a lot in the upcoming testing videos. Along with that um, Lieb Rockwell rebound tester. I might use that a lot. It might just save me some time. Um, but anyways, so if you want to check these out, links in the description so you can go read up on them at least. And if you want to take and win one of those cheap Amazon anvils, all you have to do is go and show up to one of our monthly live streams. The details to that will also be down in the description. As always, God bless you. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll get you on the next one.